Well, we have this problem about density, uh, which you asked us to, to do. Uh, all right, define density, obviously density rho equals m over v, mass per volume. So the definition of density is that um, it's equal to mass per volume. Um, then it says, the problem says, the mass m of a metal sphere is, give, is given by the expression, this expression here is given, and they give us the rho, which is density, and m, which is the mass. Here are the values of density and mass, and they give us the percentage error. And as usually, as usual in this type of problems, first we have to calculate something, one known quantity without considering the, the uncertainties. So we need to find the diameter D using this formula, the given formula. So we need to solve for D. And um, D is in the power of uh, uh, the cube, uh, the power of cube. So if we solve for D here, D cube first of all is equal to six times six times the mass divided by pi rho, which is the density. And, okay, if we add the values here, these values here, we ignore the errors. So that would be six, six times the mass, which is 7,5 kilograms. The units are already SI units, so that's fine. We don't have to convert anything. Divide by pi, which is three, 3,14 times um, rho the density, 8,100 kilograms, uh, kilograms per cubic meter. And this uh, gives us something, what does, does it give? Let me see the calculation. 1, 1,769 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Well, that, that should be cubic meters because uh, we used SI units. But now this is the D cube. Eh? To find the D, uh, we simply take the, uh, the cubic root of uh, this number, 1,769 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And this gives something like a 0, 0,121 okay, meters. But uh, if we check the significant figures, how many significant figures we have here? We have two and there's also two, so this can be left out. So if we find it to the correct number, the appropriate num number of significant figures, that should be 0, 0,12 meters. That would be the diameter. Now, uh, where is that now? Use uh, your answer in one to determine the value of D with its, with, its, with its absolute uncertainty. Absolute uncertainty, that means the del delta D, eh? this, is, this would be the absolute uncertainty for the diameter, to an appropriate number of significant figures. Okay, we have already the, the answer in significant, the correct significant figures here. Now let us see, how do we find the, the absolute uh, uncertainty? Well, let's go back here. We have, we are given the percentage uncertainties here. And um, to find the percentage uncertainty of the diameter, the percentage uncertainty, uh, we just have to add the percentage uncertainties that we have in our formula, which is this one. Eh? But D this is d to the power of cube, okay? If I, I solve for d here, hold it, where can I write? Let's, uh, let's, make, let's write it in blue. Hello, blue. All right. For d, if I solve for d here, that should be, we said, the, the cubic root of um, 6 times the mass divided by pi rho, which, how else can I write it? Uh, can I write this? I can write it as 6m divided by pi rho to the power of one third, isn't it? One third. Which means that um, when I take now the percentage, the percentage uncertainties and I add them to find the total percentage uncertainty, I have to 
multiply every quantity here to, to the power of one third. So uh, what things have I asserted this year? We have the mass and the density. I have, yeah. Um, so for the mass, uh, the mass, mass, mass is 4% uncertainty. So 4%, but now I have to multiply it by one third times one third. Uh, percent plus uh, the uncertainty from the density here which which is again times one third and the for the density is five percent so this five percent these are multiplications yeah? and what do I get here it's four over three plus one, uh, five over three that should be nine over three which is three percent so this is the percentage percentage uncertainty of the uh, for the what is this the diameter eh? what is this yeah <sighs> diameter isn't it yeah all right now okay I found the percentage uncertainty now but I need the absolute uncertainty so what do we have here how do I find the absolute uncertainty in a hundred in a hundred every hundred units, uh, the uncertainty is three. In my case, which, uh, which I have this value, 0, 0, 0,12, let's have it, let's add the one there. At the end, we'll take the significant figures. In the 0, 0,121 meters that we have here, how much is the uncertainty, the, the absolute uncertainty, and if I take the ratio here and solve for x, the x will be uh, 3 times um, 0, 0,121 divided by 100. And this uh, uh, it's about 0, 0,0363 meters, but, but be careful now because this is an absolute uncertainty. Let's uh, round it up to one significant figure. So this about 0, 0,004 okay so this this is here my the absolute uncertainty that I wanted to find this is the absolute uncertainty which I have to place here in my answer plus minus 0, 0,004 and the um, diameter diameter is 0, 0, 0, 0,12 I'll use the two significant figures because they say to an appropriate number of significant figures. So my diameter is 0, 0,12 meters plus 0, 0,004, plus minus, I mean, 0, 0,004 meters. And this is the answer, um, including the absolute uncertainty. So perhaps the only difficult thing here was, um, I mean, something that we have not seen in previous problems is that the, the my formula here was to the power d was um, equal to six to this formula which is uh, this quantities which are raised to the power of one over third one over three and um, usually we have round numbers isn't it we don't have cubic square cubic roots or anything of the sort so that originate um, f from the quantities that have an error. So if we look at this formula here, um, the six has no error, so we don't care. It's the, the error arises from the mass, this quantity, the mass, and from the, uh, what is it, the row, the density. Uh, the six and the pi are numbers, with specific values, they don't have error. So we just add the, all the errors that are, that are due to the quantities that we are given with uh, this percentage error. So here it's only the mass and the density that have errors, so we have to add those two errors, the error from the, from the mass plus the error from the, uh, from the density. And uh, uh, but but we have to multiply with the power in which they appear. Like in this case, 
times one third because the power that they are raised uh, to the power of one third because of this uh, cubic root. Hold it, I need some empty space. Where can I find? Some? Yeah, here, for example. You see, if we if we have um, a quantity which is uh, I don't know, say m to the power of two, okay, and this m has an error, a certain error. This m to the power of two means that this is m times m. So we have one error from here and one error from there. That is why when we, we, we have to add two errors. That is why we, we multiply our errors with the power of, uh, to which the, the quantity is raised. In our case now, we had uh, this diameter, which is not the diameter, yeah. We have the diameter that, um, uh, Goodness, what is the word that um, well, that depends on the mass and the density? And but the mass is raised to the power of one third, and the density is also raised to the power of one third. It doesn't matter if the density is on the, the denominator or anything. The the thing is that there is an error due to the mass and an error due to this density. And therefore, we have to add those errors. But remember, because they are to the power of one third, we have to multiply it with a one third, the coefficient of one third. And here we have the percentage error for the for the mass, and the and the percentage error for for the this density. You don't consider the constants. You only consider the stuff, the things that have an error. When you calculate the errors, you simply add all the errors from the quantities that are associated with an error. Okay. It's just to remember that you have to raise them to the correct, um, sorry, you have to multiply with the correct coefficient, which is the power to which they are raised, those, those quantities. Yeah, you time it by the power. You you time it by the power, and uh, sometimes, usually, in all the previous examples we have seen, the power was all usually an integer number. It's only this time. It's the first time we meet the power, which is uh, the, the one third, which is not an integer; it's a fraction of one. But otherwise, it's like all the problems we have seen in the past. If you look at the pre at previous problems, I don't have them. Okay, maybe I can find some previous. Can I go and find some previous problems that we have done? You see, we, we don't consider any constants. We only consider the errors of the quantities that are associated with the error, the ones that we are given here. Okay. Let, let's find, let's find one of the past uh, problems. Where is this? Here there's an error, okay, let's see. Um, hello, what's that? Oh, we were solving straight on exam papers. Eh? Uh, errors, let's see. Mm, oh dear, my words. <laughs> Let me concentrate. Past papers. Don't remember which ones we have done. Let's see here. All right. Something that we have solved. For example, here. Do you remember this? It was what was that? We had to that we had to calculate. Sorry. Then. Determining the DSI base units of K. Oh, that was about units. Then calculate K, okay, calculate K. Uh, they give us this uh, formula and we have to calculate K from here. So what do we find for K uh, here from there? If we do the, if we solve for K here. Uh, K would be M, capital M, times t squared divided by r cubed, cube, isn't it? So what was that, what is the m? m is the mass of the earth, k is a constant, and t is some time, eh? okay. Okay, so here, 
uh, they gave us they gave us all these errors these percentage errors for time oh all of them yeah had errors yeah we did not have any constant here say nevertheless say that we had a certain uh, formula that had a uh, multiplied by some constant i don't know say times uh, 17 say all right i mean that's not a formula but nevertheless say that we had something like that if we were to find the, the error of that exactly. we, would, we would ignore the 17 we wouldn't have to multiply by 17 we would have okay. to do exactly the same thing as we've done here where here we where we added all the errors multiplied by the power to which these quantities are appeared appearing um, up here, we wouldn't have to multiply by 17 anything here. Okay. So you just you just um, add the errors. You ignore the constants. Okay, let's remove it now. If we had to find t, ah, like here, yes. Um, if we had, if we have to have t here, yeah, because you you take the square root of this k r cubed divided by m exactly which is like k r cubed divided by m to the power of one over one over two ah jeez oh, look at this <laughs> scribblings make a mess eh? um yeah so uh the error would have an error from the r and the a an error from the m Okay, let's assume that we didn't have a value of t, all right? So the, um, the error would be, uh, the error for the r, what is this? 1%, 1%. Um, times, times three, because we have this power of three there, times, the, times one over two. All that would be the error for the t, plus the error for the m, which would be, what is the m now two percent times uh, what power is this one one over two and that would give us the total error for the capital t does okay. it make sense it, uh, this is this error plus this error that it looks like a ratio here the way i wrote it <laughs> yeah so let's have this all the nonsense now because they don't refer to the proper problem and we don't want to sit in the future and say what have i done here you only take the errors and you only add the things that have an error constants do not have errors so you don't add anything okay okay otherwise it's okay yeah? so let's get out of here and do something else now um in the previous okay uh i'm sharing now you see that okay maybe uh all right. now in the previous lesson if you remember that was so long ago we were doing some problems with forces uh like do you remember this problem the thing is that um we did some problems and um, the objects were at equilibrium eh? so let us do another one quickly if we we still have like eight seven minutes left seven minutes left <laughs> Let's see this problem again. Again, this object is at equilibrium. Let me find my things here. All right. I have the calculations. Yeah. Okay. So a bucket is hanging from two ropes. Here is one rope and another rope, and here is supposed to be the bucket. So we take forces acting at this point. A bucket is hanging from two ropes. T1, let's say that this is T1, the tension in this rope, let's call it T1, uh, it's, it's given, it says it's 129,9 Newtons, and it acts at 30 degrees to the vertical, which means the vertical, that means this angle is 30 degrees, and the T2 is 75, so I should draw it a little bit smaller. Uh, this is 75 uh, Newtons and acts at 60 degrees to the vertical. So this angle here is 60 degrees. Mm. If the bucket is at equilibrium, find its weight. 
the weight of the bucket, how much is it? Okay, remember that weight, okay, okay it acts on the bucket, but I mean, um, we can move it up to there, we can translate it along the same line so that we have all the forces starting from this point here, the common point, so that we, cap uh, we can apply the condition for equilibrium, which means all forces, all the components acting on the vertical must be zero, and all forces acting on the horizontal axis are also zero. Okay, maybe I should do a better drawing. Yeah, this set is in my way and I can't draw my components. <laughs> so this is 30 degrees. Mm. All right. So let us, um, uh, let us take this to be our Y axis and uh, a horizontal axis X would be horizontally, okay. Let us analyze all our forces that need to be analyzed. The T1 and T2 need to be analyzed. The, the weight does not need to be analyzed because it's already on the y-axis. Okay, so let's do a blue, blue, hello. All right. Okay, so, hey. Where's the pen? Okay. All right, so let's take the components of the T1 first. This would be, the, it's Y component, let's call it T1 times, you see it's, a, it's adjacent to these 30 degrees. So adjacent um, sides are associated with a cosine, 30 degrees. And the, the, the X component along the X axis it is, will be this one, and this will be T1 sine of 30 degrees. Let's do the same for the T2. Now the T2, uh, let's take first its X component, which will be this one. That will be T2, uh, T2 is this one, sine of 60 degrees now, of 60 degrees, and its Y component, here it is, okay, this component here, it's two, T2 times cosine of 60 degrees. I hope you can see why they're sine and cosine. Eh? All right, so we have, um, we can take now uh, the x-axis and the y-axis, the equations, or the forces acting on the x must be zero, or the forces acting on the y must, must also be zero, because the object is at equilibrium, so there's no movement, no acceleration, rather. Okay, on the x, where is it? This is the x. What do we have on the x? We have two things, two components, one for component of T1 and one for T2. These two, because they're, they're opposite, and therefore they must be equal, so that the sum must be zero. So T1 uh, sine 30, which is this one component, must be equal with a T2 uh, sine of 60 degrees. So this is one equation for the x. On the y now, on the y, we have two up and one down. What is the two up? Let's say up to be the positive. Eh? T1, T1 cosine 30, hey, cosine, <laughs> T1 cosine 30 plus, plus T2 cosine of 60 degrees, which are the two up forces or their components, must be equal to whatever is down, which is the weight. And what do we need here? We need to find the weight. Oh, okay. So here it is, actually. We, we, we are given the T1, we are given the T2. We can just use the second equation if we can find the weight straightforward. We don't even need this one. All right, so great, but it's, it's good to write two equations because if we have two equations, we can solve for two unknowns. If they wanted they could ask for two unknowns. Okay, so here it's uh, great. We can choose this second equation to solve for weight. So weight will be T1 is what T1 
51 is 129,9 newtons times cosine 30 plus uh, T2 is 75,0 newtons times, uh, what is this, uh, cosine 60. Now let me check my calculator. What do I have here? Do I have, didn't I find it? Oh, I find 150. Uh, if my calculations are correct, this should be 150 newtons. I don't have so, so there is our answer. You see, once we write those two equations for the x and y axis, this is where the physics ends and the rest is like calculations, algebra, nothing special. And the, these calculations give us the, that the weight is 150 newtons.